we'll start with the prayers oh 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 om sahana bhavato सहनौ भुनक्त सह वीर करवाहै तेजस्वी नवदी तमस्तुमाशावै ओ शाथि 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 श्री दक्षिणामूर्ति स्त्रोत्र this was the text which we have done so far today is the last session for this text i plan to do a quick revision of the 10 verses of this stotra the lord in vedanta has got two aspects one without form which is called as nirgunam the other one is with form sar gunam nirgunam form we cannot explain words cannot explain the nirguna form of the lord yato vacho nivartante is the verse from taitri upanishad it clearly says that the words return back without touching lord dakshina murti in nirguna form here what we are saying is the saguna form saguna form means it is the expression of the same nirguna form in a manifested form manifestation means i can see visualize through my eyes ears and so on so what we see the picture of lord dakshina murti with the chin mudra is the form of the lord and what is this dakshina murti going to teach us this lord is teaching us that o jeeva don't think that you are a helpless insignificant being in the universe accidentally born and one day will quit this universe if that was the case there was no teaching required <clears throat> all of us we live in this world with an individuality i am paulina living in poland this is an individuality i am so and so living in india i am so and so living in singapore the individuality is the ahamkara ahamkara is the ego i the lower i which is dwelling in this body which is with form so lord dakshina murti is teaching this jeeva with form that you are not this body you are not the mind you are not the pranas but you are one with me in my nirgunam nature this is the teaching this is the teaching of not only 
Dakshinamurti Stotram, which is the essence of all the Upanishads. It is the essence of the Bhagavad Gita and the Brahma Sutra. So this is the final ultimate teaching of whatever scriptures we are studying. And this teaching has been beautifully expressed in 10 verses. Very, very nice verses. It brings out all the concepts of Vedanta. In a nutshell, we can understand, our mind can dwell on it and immediately rise to the level of the formless. That is the purpose of this stotram written by Adi Shankaracharya. So today's summary is going to be a quick revision of the entire text. The whole text of 10 verses is broken up into these divisions which you can see before you. Verse number 1 to 4 is the essence of Vedanta. Verse 5 talks about the deficiencies in the human intellect. Verse 6 is a refutation of the Shunyavada. And from verse 7 to 10 is a reaffirmation of the Vedantic teaching. So basically what it presents is, it presents the Vedantic view of the Jiva in 1 to 4. It takes into consideration the other philosophers from 5 to 7. And then it reaffirms that Vedanta Advaitam is the truth from verse 8 to 10. Three sections, three broad sections. This is the presentation which you will find in most of the advanced texts of Vedanta. Like Naishkar Mesiddhi, Shruthisara Samudvaranam, Vichara Sagara, all these texts will follow this type of methodology. It will present the Pratignya Vakyam, which is the verse 1 to 4, then it will refute so that the questions regarding the other philosophies are doubts about the other philosophies are sorted out and again conclude saying that Advaitam is the ultimate truth. Verse number one deals with, broadly you should understand that the teaching here is Tattvam Asi of Chandogya Upanishad. Tvam represents the individual Jiva or the soul who is living in this body. There is a soul, there is a uh, there is a, this jiva is nothing else but it is a entity which is living in this body and it is undergoing experiences in life. Throughout our life there are only two types of experiences sukham and dukham which means joy and sorrow. So this jiva who is living in this body is called Thuam Pada. In Mahavakyam Tattvamasi, Thuam stands for the individual who lives in this body. And in this whole universe, there is a soul. There is a soul and that is called as Tat. And that soul is nothing else but God. 
this is how we analyze ourselves and we analyze the world this is the methodology adopted jiva jagat ishwara jagat means the universe ishwara is the indweller in this universe like there is an indweller in this body there is an indweller in the whole cosmos and all what we say is there is a common entity a common substratum between the individual soul the jiva and there is between and between the lord lord dakshinamurti in the whole cosmos bhagavad gita lord krishna teaches this entire cosmos whatever you see in the cosmos is me that's all in chapter 10 and chapter 11 of the bhagavad gita this is the most prominent teaching of the bhagavad gita it says you want to know me don't go to a temple you open your eyes and you see outside whatever you see is the lord is this higher principle is this lord dakshinamurti who is teaching us who we are now this body is made up of consciousness and matter matter is the body the gross body what is the relationship between the consciousness awareness and the inert matter that is what is the study in verse number 1 vishvam darpan drishyamana nagare stulyam nijantargatam the word here nijantargatam is very important because this soul what we are is inside us inside the mind beyond the mind beyond the intellect is this lord dakshinamurti and that lord is the adhishthanam adhishthanam means he is the substratum from where this entire creation comes and the entire creation creation is also resolved so adhishthana adhyasa sambandha is the fact of this creation what is adhishthanam awareness awareness means consciousness it means knowledge it is represented as sat chit ananda so the substratum is sat chit ananda the superimposed which is called as adhyasa is the world the whole world including my body and mind always remember whenever we say jagat or the universe it includes my gross body and gross mind and the subtle mind <coughs> and the relationship is called as relationless relationship why is it called relationless because the substratum in this case can exist without the adhyasa without the superimposition of the world this lord dakshinamurti who is the substratum of this universe can exist independently so the first verse is a methodology which is being used and that is called as adhyaropa adhyaropa means superimposition of the universe on something which we call it as awareness the ultimate substratum of this body and this universe is consciousness and our goal in this 10 verses is to identify what that consciousness is and what does it do to explain this in the first verse they use two examples and the example is the mirror 
and the reflection of a city in the mirror. This is the first example. When we see the city in the mirror, like when you are taking a car outside driving, you see the city, all the cars from behind, you see it in a mirror. So similarly, in the screen of consciousness, we see this entire waking state. And then it goes back. Again, it comes back tomorrow morning. Again, it goes up. Again, it comes back. This is what is called as the, in the screen of consciousness, I experience the world. The world is reflection. It is not the original consciousness. Therefore, it is Mithya. Mithya means it is an appearance. Like you see your face in a mirror, it is an appearance, it is a Mithya. You cannot say there are two persons, me and the reflection. Actually, there is only one. So similarly, between the Adhisthana, the consciousness, and this entire universe, there is only consciousness. The second example is the dream. All the dream world which we experience very clearly in the dream, on waking up, we say the whole dream was in my mind. Therefore, we say dream is an appearance. So similarly, when, we, when the Lord Dakshinamurti teaches us that you are Atma, you are pure consciousness, we also understand that this waking experience is a Mithya experience. I should not take it too seriously. Let it come. I will go through these experiences and it will anyway pass. But nothing is going to be affected in me. I am that pure consciousness. I am unaffected by any event in creation. Birth or death, I am unaffected. Any problems in the world, I, the consciousness, am not affected. The body will undergo some pain. After some time, it will go away. The mind will have some thoughts of sorrow, of missing people, you know, uh, different types of sorrow. Th sorrowful thoughts will be there. But after knowing this Dakshinamurti Stotram, you should say, I am the pure Atma. I am untouched. Like the movie screen, I am untouched by whatever happens in the screen of life. The waking world in Satchit Ananda Atma comes and goes. Atma is the Adhishthanam, the real I. What is experienced is the body, mind and world, which is called as Adhyasa. Atma is Satyam. It exists independently. The world, body, mind and world is Mithya. It is an appearance. It is incidental. It is available during the waking state. It disappears in the sleep state. Again, it comes in the morning. Again, it disappears. Therefore, I learn to look at myself as the pure consciousness in which the world itself is coming and going, but the world is not me. That is what is the Satyatva Buddhi. Whatever is the experiences. In the morning, you may have had some bad experience. In the afternoon, you may have had some good experiences. These are all the moods of the mind. The moods of the mind are determined by Prarabdha Karma, which comes in our life. In this life, we are supposed to experience this experience certain events, they will come, they will go. 
but I am not connected with any of these experiences is the teaching of Lord Dakshinamurti. Asangatvam means I am unconnected ever. Therefore, I was always consciousness before the birth of the body. I am conscious now. I will be consciousness when this body is not experienced, but I am that pure Sat Chit Atma. And this Sat Chit Atma is non dual, Advitiyam. So when I sit in meditation, these are the four points I should bring in my mind. So whenever I sit in meditation, Vedantic meditation deals with thoughts about the nature of Atma. At any time, you will never have a thoughtless state when you do Vedantic meditation. And when you start doing it, you will enjoy it more and more. You will never get tired of it because it is, you're talking about your own nature. And it happens to be Ananda Sarupa, limitless, limitless in time, limitless in space. I'm always experiencing myself. I lose connection to the body mind world. Then they are dysfunctional. In sleep or in death, they are dysfunctional. But I am always experiencing myself as this pure consciousness, awareness. This is the first verse where the Lord says, Oh, Jiva, don't think that you are insignificant in the world. You are the most significant in this world. Once we understand this, our sorrow is nothing else but Maya. Maya means our mind. Trigunatmika Maya. Sattva Rajas Tamas Maya. Chapter 14 of the Bhagavad Gita explains very clearly the nature of our mind and how I can be a Gunatita. How I can learn to disidentify with my mind and remain as Atma. So in the first verse, the enlightened Jiva recognizes the nature of Ishvara as that pure consciousness. And the nature of the Jiva is also the same consciousness. That consciousness is called as the self. So the first verse, to recap, it talks about the mithyatvam, the appearance of the world. Two examples, like a reflection in a mirror, like the dream in a waking mind. This whole waking state is also like a dream or a reflection. Who am I? I am that pure consciousness like the screen, unaffected, untouched by anything happening in creation. The second verse talks about how the world comes up like a magic show of a yogi who can create this whole world again, unfold, uh, again folded back, again unfolded, again folded. Who does this? It is the Lord. It is Lord Dakshinamurti who creates this entire world. And again, it he folds it back. The waking dream and sleep three states are all nothing else but his play. That is what is said in the second verse. Like you see the whole universe in a seed. Similarly, you can see this entire creation in the Lord. 
and when we say the lord he has got two forms what we see is the world of objects and beings what we don't see is satchidananda pure nirguna chaitanyam awareness one very important point is time and space in vichara sagara a very very advanced text which describes what is time and what is space very beautiful text it goes and goes into very deep aspects of what is time itself is time a part of atma or is time a part of the world big discussions take place and then in the end they say this time and space belongs to this world it does not belong to the attribute less atma the consciousness so creation is nothing else but three gunas as mentioned in tatva bodha and the bhagavad gita sattva rajas and tamas whole creation can be explained in these three words satvik rajasik tamasik any object any being you take it is either tamasik like a stone it is rajasik like a human being who is rajas filled of activity or it is satvik pure in nature five elements is this creation mentioned in taitri upanishad chandogya says three elements but vedanta says don't worry there are 26 theories of creation in the upanishads ultimately vedanta says anyway we have to reject all of them in the second phase of our teaching which is called as apavada so the teaching is you you drop the creation and you take the substratum of the creation as your nature <clears throat> as the lord's nature so here tatpada means analysis of ishvara the lord prardhanek upanishad takes up the same analysis of tatpada in the form of ghatabhashyam the difference between what is pot and what is clay pot is not a creation but it is manifestation of what already exists in clay that is the ultimate conclusion of ghata bhashya this or a bhashya means uh, a dialogue it's a commentary on an aspect of analysis of this creation which is called as ghata bhashya so where did this pot exist it existed in clay similarly the world exists in satchid atma that is what is the ultimate conclusion the world exists in this pure awareness it comes out of awareness goes back to awareness the whole universe including a body and mind in mandukya upanishad which we are going to do next <clears throat> the next text which we are going to do from next week we are going to see the see the analysis of how it happens it is called a satkarya vada satkarya vada means whatever is sat that only is the truth existence consciousness is the truth world is mithya like we get oil from a seed butter in milk juice in a sugar cane and a tree in a seed these are all examples to show that the whole creation is coming from one source and the source is this maya shakti of lord which manifests as this entire jagat so bhagwan is the remainder ultimately when you remove the whole universe 
the seen universe you remove it from your consciousness that means what remains is the adi sesha remainder without the time and space is this pure consciousness as i talk about the consciousness remember we are that consciousness my own nature is this pure consciousness being revealed by lord dakshinamurti when i when i listen to this talk my mind should go away from the waking state into the sleep state and then experience in the sleep state what is happening is that the whole world has gone into my mind and what is remainder is nothing else but that pure consciousness that is the second verse the third verse is very important yes say yes yai va swaranam sadatmakam asat kalpatakam bhasate sakshat tattvam isi iti veda vachasa yo bhotayat ya shritan here what it means is this is a final teaching the lord is saying you are that you are that pure consciousness you are not this body you are that the relationship between that pure brahman and this sakshi of the body that is being established for example in my body i am the pure consciousness i am the sakshi i am the sakshi means i am the witness i am the witness of whatever is happening in this mind i am a witness of whatever is happening in this body and so that is called as sakshi and what is brahman what is that lord lord is the jagat karana lord is the cause of this whole universe and this sakshi is avastha treya sakshi that means the mind has got three avasthas the sakshi is a witness of the three avasthas and the lord is nothing else but the awareness consciousness principle which exists in the entire cosmos when it rises it 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 it, it, it rises in the lord it it ultimately dissolves in the lord that means the totality unless and until i am able to understand the totality then only i can say i am free this aikyam i must be aikyam means a oneness there is no difference between the lord and me the lord is this whole world in matter in a matter form the i am in this body and mind in a matter form but what lies beyond the matter is consciousness it is existence so the body consciousness is called as tvam pada the world existence is called as tat pada lakshyartha lakshyartha means the indicative meaning of the world is existence the indicative meaning of this of me the jiva is consciousness and what we do is we say this pure consciousness jivatma is the same as the pure existence paramatma that is called as the oneness this is a technical teaching of how to see how to get moksha liberation only when you understand the oneness of the universe and our self you can get freedom from this body because you have to hold on to that pure atma and say that i am not the body i am the pure atma i am the pure consciousness that's all the moment you attach yourself to the pure consciousness the nirguna form the formless nature then you are free ever free 
not today free but you have always been free that has been my swarupa that is my nature and two examples are generally given light without the objects normally in a room we see the light with full of objects my table my chair my laptop my a mobile my mouse everything is there and then there's a tube light which is shining on the top it is illumining all these objects for me what happens in the night when they when the light is there and suppose i take away everything from this unit from this room so the light principle the illuminating principle without the object is like the consciousness which exists which illumines the world without objects and that consciousness i am once you know this you are not you don't have any fear of death because death cannot affect consciousness space untouched by any event in creation everything happens in space but nothing happens to space ever so this witness atma without the thoughts in the mind is called as sat chit ananda so jivatma and paramatma are not two separate entities they are one entity and that both entity the common name for both jivatma and paramatma is atma and that common entity is called as the reality and that reality lends the chit the consciousness it lends to the body mind for some time for 8 hours 10 hours 12 hours it lends how exactly like the waker lends the consciousness to the dream and again takes it back similarly the atma gives the consciousness to the waking world and again it goes back so when when it lends the consciousness we call it jiva when it lends the existence we call it the world jagat pure existence in the world you take any anything in creation you can bring it down to the level of existence so the waker lends satchit to the dreamer atma lends satchit to the waker these summary notes are beautiful notes if you can go through them absorb them you will get the the ultimate benefit to realize the atma very beautiful notes 10 verses very deep in their meaning and liberation is the key here i should be able to say i am that free atma after this dakshna murti stotra nana chit ghato darasti tamaha deepak prabhava swaram jnanam yasya tu chakshuradi karana dwara vahi swandate janami ti tameva bhantam anubhati tat samastam jagat tasmai shri guru murtiye namaidam shri dakshina murtiye what is the nature of this consciousness how can i understand in this body how can i understand this consciousness how can i be one with ishwara ishwara is so big he is he is the creator how can i be that very beautiful example lord uh, i mean uh, adi shankara acharya has taken here he says like you have a pot with many holes this body is like a pot with many holes of the sense organs in this pot is suppose you keep a lamp inside a pot you can see the five beams of light coming out similarly in this body there is a consciousness light which throws out five beams and you see the whole universe again the beams are taken back at night again you go to sleep again in the morning you come back again the, it it manifests so this consciousness is responsible for the manifestation of the whole universe 
and unmanifestation of the universe. So the confusion, how I can be a part of that Ishvara is resolved in this verse by that example. And you may say that in sleep, I experience blankness. But what the Shankaracharya is saying is it is not blankness. It is an unmanifest condition. Objects are called as idam. Aham is the self-luminous atma, consciousness. The world is non-luminous by nature. Atma is luminous by nature. So what happens is, I, the pure consciousness, which is called as the Samanya Chaitanyam, the general consciousness, I come out in the form of objects and beings. When there is mind and prana, we call it as creatures. When it is pure objects, we call it as the insentient objects of the world. So room is lit by sunlight, which is reflected outside, kept in outside in a, we have seen this example. So the Two examples we can take here in this for understanding what is consciousness and understanding how it illumines this whole body and mind is by taking the example of pot with holes is one example. The second example is, uh, I have taken this example when we took the actual class. You keep a mirror outside and in a, if a, one of the window is open, you let a mirror reflect the sunlight into the room and it can illumine the room. So similarly, the mind is that mirror. When the mind is at a particular time, it wakes up, you can see that consciousness reflected and the whole world is illumined, manifest. When the when this mirror is gone, the mind is sleeping, it goes into passive condition, the world goes away into unmanifest condition. So it is Ishvara, that consciousness, which lights up the universe and makes it known. Very important sentence. Without this light, I can never know the, know the universe. That's why consciousness is compared to a light. In chapter 15, we have the verse which talks about Atma being the light of all lights. Natatra Suryo Bhati is from Kathopanishad, which also talks about the light of consciousness. From verse number five to five and six is the refutation of the wrong notions which we carry. We take the body as our self. Body is born, we say I am born. Body dies, we say I die. That is the principle of charvakas. Some people say that the prana in this body is gone, therefore I am gone. That is the principle of pranavadis. So don't be a charvaka, don't be a pranavadi. Some people say indriyavadis. Sense organs are not see, able to see, I am blind. I am blind means you're referring to the eyes being blind. I am that pure consciousness. Pure consciousness is neither blind nor is it <clears throat> seeing the world. It is the light which is behind. That is what I am. Some people say I am the buddhi because my, without intelligence, what is there in the world? Without mind, what is there? So they say they are buddhi. These are all the delusions of Atma. The right thing is I am the pure consciousness. 
and most of us before we come to vedanta before we come to spiritual study we will have all these confusions deha prana indriya manaha buddhim these are all the confusions of the different kinds of intellects some people say in sleep in sleep there is nothing from nothing only the whole world is coming that is called a shunyavadi blankness don't go don't keep on thinking of this because you are building up a wrong notion in your mind and the intellects according to the intellects shankaracharya calls them stri bala andha jada ma maya basically it is all all maya stri means emotionally overpowered suppose you are full of emotions i am angry i am this i am always shouting i am always uh, laughing smiling agitated you know i throw tantrums this that that is me that's what you feel no that's incorrect my mind is very restless yes you say my mind is restless don't say i am that don't equate yourself to the mind balaha balaha means immature we say the child the child he is still an innocent child we always say that because his mind is not developed but he is not that mind he is the pure consciousness andaha andaha means blind an intellect which doesn't have the shastrik knowledge is also called as the blind intellect when you have the knowledge of dakshina murti stotram it becomes a wise intellect jadam jada means obst obstinate you have a obstructed intellect who whatever uh, guru might teach you still will say no 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 but i think this is what i am after teaching the whole of dakshina murti stotram you if you still say i am this body or mind or intellect then you need to come out of that wrong notion so maya is nothing else but our state of sleep where the atma is veiled and that is called as ignorance ajnanam mula avidya in mandukya upanishad the sleep state is taken as the cause of this entire waking and dream and even in advanced text of vichara sagara a similar thought process goes on i will dwell, dwell more on this when we do the mandukya upanishad so vikshepa is nothing else but it is the thoughts in my mind which is a cause of confusion so shankaracharya says in the fifth verse don't get into wrong notions come out of these wrong notions which are there in your intellect learn what is consciousness what is the nature of consciousness and learn to be free the sixth verse is talking a little bit more about our sleep state and what happens in the sleep state is described here rahu grasta divakarendra sadrshah maya samachadana sanmatra here the word is sanmatra so the individual who enters the deep sleep state is like the sun and the moon which gets covered by uh, by the earth's reflection on them we see it in eclipse so when the sun is covered actually does is the sun covered no atma is not covered i am that pure atma which is beyond the three states of the mind which is waking dream and sleep what is covering is this waking dream and sleep which is called as maya i remove the covering and i know i am the pure atma which lies beyond the mind that is the teaching in this verse it is a refutation of shunyavadi shunyavadi means uh, those people who say that everything is coming from non existence from blankness what shankaracharya is teaching us here is 
what is the sleep state? In sleep, the existence is wheeled in Maya. I am there. All of us cannot deny. Yesterday in sleep, I was there. One year ago in sleep, I was there. So sleep is 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 a part and parcel of my experience. It is not the truth. It is an experience of the mind. All the experiences have to come to me whenever the mind is awake. But I am the consciousness which lies beyond the mind. The moon and sun are wheeled in eclipse. I am the only the bhokta in dream. In dream, I am not a karta. I am only an enjoyer. Whatever is happening, I enjoy and then I get up. That's it. I don't do things. And in sleep, what happens? I am agnata. I am ignorant about myself, about the world. That is the primary cause of all the confusions. And that confusion is removed by Lord Dakshinamurti through this teaching of this 10 verses. The deep sleep state is unqualified existence. Remember this word, unqualified existence. Whereas waking state is a qualified existence. So unqualified existence is not blankness. It is not non-existence, but it is unmanifest potential condition. From where again the world comes back, the body comes back. Again, the world I experience. From where again it goes back to this unqualified existence. It is a cycle. The creation is a cycle of unqualified existence coming into existence, qualified existence, again going back to unqualified existence, again going back, going to manifest, unmanifest, manifest, unmanifest. When we come to Dakshinamurti Stotram, we are out of this wheel of life and death. We are out of this th uh, wheel of three gunas of the mind because we own up our pure existence. The qualified existence is available for transaction in baking. Space is a positive entity. It is not emptiness. These are all the teachings for the people who are thinking that everything is blankness in this universe. Sanmatra is non-transactional existence in sleep. I am a doctor. I am a yogi. These are all qualified I. I am an engineer. I am a programmer. I am an expert in shares trading. I do so many things. These are all intellect, see? But I am not that. I am this pure consciousness. And whenever you are attached to these roles, what happens is you will always have dukkham and sukham. As a doctor, I may be earning a lot of money, but also I have dukkham. Similarly, yogi. If you say I am a yogi, I teach yoga asanas. What happens when you are 80 years old? It is, it is the body and the mind, but I am not that. So in sleep, I am the pure existence consciousness. I, Maya covers the senses, the transactions of waking, and I do not recognize my real nature. The general existence, which is my real nature, is eclipsed like the sun. And then what happens? The vikshepa, the thoughts in the mind come throughout the day. Whole day we are full of thoughts. That is nothing else but the avarna shakti. That shakti of the mind is called as maya. 
So waking is a visesha sattva, attributed I. Whereas Sakshi is what? Attributeless I. That is my real nature. The waking I is my incidental nature. So Sat cannot be non-existence. It is always existent. World is not us. It cannot come from Asat. That means it is cannot come from non-existence. World is always existing in Sat, manifesting in uh, mani it comes into manifestation, goes back to unmanifestation. So in sleep, I am the unmanifest form, attributeless I. Pratyabhijna. Pratyabhijna means what? Pratyabhijna means recognition. Recognizing that state of sleep is called as Pratyabhijna. It is a term used in this verse. So I can re re recognize something only when I am present. So in sleep, I am present as the pure Sat Chit. And that Sat Chit is there in the waking also. And it is recognizing I had experienced, witnessed a sleeping condition of the mind. When you wake up and say, I had a good sleep, but then we never learn to understand what does it mean. So the Guru gives us the teaching, you are that ultimate consciousness which lies beyond the sleep state. The Sishya accepts the truth and says, yes. Tasmai Shri Guruve Namaha. I bow down to that Dakshnamurti, the Guru. It is that Sat Chit Ananda principle in the form of Shankaracharya made him write these 10 verses through these 10 verses, even after so many thousands of years, we are learning the same text and realizing the same truth which existed at the time of Shankaracharya. <clears throat> truth has not changed. It will never change. Even after 100 years, somebody reads the same 10 verses of the Dakshnamurti, he will learn the same truth. The consciousness is the real I, pure existence appears as this universe. Existence is nirvisesha. Nirvisesha means without attributes. Whereas the world is servisesha. From 7 to 10 is the reassertion of Vedanta and Reassertion means it says that you, the, in truth, you are this pure Atma. Balya dishupi jagrida dishu tatha sarva avastha sopi. That means all states, you are this self. In childhood, you were the consciousness. In boyhood, in girlhood, you were the consciousness. In the youth, you are the consciousness. In old age, also, you are the consciousness. The body becomes old, but you are the same. Atma Anubhava is a continuous experience. We don't verbalize this in sleep. We don't say that I am Atma in sleep because the mind is not awake. Only when the mind is awake, the sense organs are awake. And then I can say in the waking state, the sense organs are awake because the mind is awake. Atma I is with attributes when it is called as Ahamkara. Right now, all of us are Ahamkara. As Ahamkara, you are listening, I am talking. In sleep, this Ahamkara is in passive condition. Then what happens? The whole world for me is in passive condition. Again, tomorrow morning, the same Ahamkara, the mind. Ahamkara is nothing else but the ego I. So Atma without the attributes is called as Satchit Ananda. The same Atma with attributes of the body, mind, intellect is called as the Ahamkara. That is what is said in the seventh verse. 
And here in the seventh verse, the chin mudra is described. I have explained this before. The three long fingers stands for the three bodies, gross, subtle, and causal. The index finger is the jiva or the ego. The thumb represents the paramatma. So when the jiva understands that it is the same as paramatma in essence, in as the essence of consciousness, then what happens is it can leave or drop the three states or the three bodies. Suppose your index finger is also pointing up. Then what happens is the ego has joined the three states and the thumb remains aloof. Paramatma is standing outside and you are standing along with the three bodies or with the three states. There is no Aikya. There is no oneness. When you learn through this Dakshinamurti Stotram, the Jiva bends down and prostrates to Lord Dakshinamurti and says, I don't have any more ego sense. I am one with you. The ego jiva I learns to drop the three states of consciousness as mithya and own up the pure consciousness thuriyam as the self. So with the chin mudra, a symbol, Lord Dakshinamurti teaches in the seventh mantra, you are one with me. So like a, you can see a person with a wig and without a wig. Without a wig is his real nature. With wig means what? With the, const, with the costume. In the waking state, we are with the one const, costume of the gross body. In the dream state, we are with another costume of the subtle body. In the sleep state, we are with another costume of the ignorance causal state, Karana Shariram. I learned to drop the three bodies through the study of this uh, Dakshinamurti Stotram, unite with that Thuriyam or that Paramatma, which lies beyond the three states and become free from the tyrannies of this mind and the painful experiences of this body. Vishwam Pashyati Karya Karanataya Suswami Sambandataha Shishya Acharya Tatha Tathaivai Putra Putra Dhatpana Bhedataha Sopne Jagrati Vaya Yesha Purushaha Maya Paribhramitaha Tasmai Shri Guru Murtaye Namaidam Shri Dakshina Murtaye The eighth verse. Here the world of cause and effect, possessor and possession, father and son, teacher and taught. These are all relationships. And these relationships are Maya. That is what is said here. The world I see of cause and effect is nothing else but a delusion. It is a moha. And what is the truth? Satchit Ananda, attributeless Atma. I am ever free. Nitya Muktaha is the truth. The Ahamkara I is the qualified I, the waker I, the dreamer I. It is bound, bound by the body and mind. And also, then it becomes related to the world. There are two sambandhas which we, we must learn. Sambandha means relationships. One is called as karya, kar, kar, karana sambandha. The father and the son. Karanam is the father, the son is the karya. Punya papa, the waker eye, 
the jiva i these are all the different types of relationships which i get when i am acting in the world as ego i but there is another relationship with the pure consciousness that is adhisthana adhyasa sambandha atma karana shariram and karana prapancha what is the what is the relationship between the karana shariram karana prapancha together the causal world and pure conscious what is that sambandha that sambandha is the substratum and superimposition like the waker and the dream which we have seen in the first verse so the absolute i sakshi i becomes the incidental ego i ahamkara i whereas the asanga sakshi i is the pure i it becomes the sasanga it becomes the ahamkara so the sakshi i is got a relationless relationship that means it can go to relationless principle when when it is in the sleep state there is no relationship with the world no relationship with the body and it is got a relationship when when the mind is awake and why does the mind get up in the morning because of prarabdha karma actions have to be done by this body whatever may be simple actions you may move from one room to another room that is an action breathing is an action thinking is an action they are all depend on on past actions that is the cycle of this universe it will come and go that's it don't bother about it what the teaching is the jiva the indweller here ahamkara which i think i am till i come to the study of dakshina bhutis stotram actually what lord is teaching me is you are me and he has taken us through the three states and has taught us how to drop the three states and look at that pure i the ninth verse is a simple verse it only says this two verses 9 and 10 has been added later on by some other acharya it only brings the sarvatma bhava into consideration and what it says is the whole world is nothing else but five elements the sun moon and the ego the jiva but the substratum for all this is nothing else but atma so the lord is vishnu roopa ishvara the five elements sun moon and jiva that mistaken god is what we call it as the world it is not the world but actually it is god jagat ishadi yukta sevanam ashtamurti bhed deva poojanam ashtamurti brit deva poojanam so what here it says is that same dakshina murti stotram is repeated in upadesha sara it is also the same ashtada murti is taken in the 7th chapter of the bhagavad gita in this uh, you will see the same type of description of the lord lord in eight fold form this is one of the ways in which they they show the whole creation the last verse sarvatvamiti sputi kritam idam yasman musmin sarve here what the uh, what it says is what is the phalam what is the benefit of knowing this knowledge of atma sarvatma there is only one atma in which the whole universe is coming and going that is the meaning of sarvatma bhava and where don't keep looking here and there and say oh, where is this atma where does it exist can i see this atma what it says is you are that atma everything is in creation is this atma i the pure i the higher i i am that all pervading dakshina murti is the ultimate benefit of this whole ten verses the lord shows that your nature is this pure sachet 
and that it is not the body we all start with the, uh, our journey with i am the body and then how do we end this whole teaching as sarvatma bhava there is only one consciousness there are no two consciousness it is advitiyam brahma brahma is another name for this lord krishna so sarvatma bhava is the ultimate so in meditation we have to learn to reach this core in us if i am able to sit and say i am this sarvatma bha uh, sarvatma atma in which the whole world is coming and going mai eva sakalam jatam mai sarvam pratishthitam mai sarvam layam yati tat brahma advayam aham asmi i am that pure consciousness everything is rising from me and it dissolves in me i am ever free atma when i repeatedly listen to these 10 verses and their meanings and i am able to absorb and assimilate this teaching in my own intellect i will say i am clear i am pure atma without any doubts i can say i am free through some prarabdha punyam i have come here to learn this stotra i have had the fortunate blessing of lord dakshinamurti to learn this teaching and i bow down in prostration to that teacher who is nothing else but who is inside me the antaryami who has blessed me to realize ultimately the pure consciousness in this body with that i close today's talk and the summary of this sessions 10 verses is this is a brilliant uh, teaching for those people who want to dwell on this teaching you can read the notes again and again and next week we start mandokya upanishad it's uh, one of the best of the upanishads because it covers the three states of consciousness very very deep in understanding and uh, if you have done it before you can redo that again because the repeated study helps us to dwell on the teaching again and again and that is what is called as nididhyasana i dwell on the teaching again and again so let's close i have sent one feedback form today if you want to continue the study please fill up the form send it to us if you want the notes to be sent for mandokya upanishad or the videos to be sent please write to us through email or through uh, uh, through the whatsapp then we'll put you on to the mailing list for the mandokya upanishad so next week is going to be mandokya upanishad i will be only doing the the uh, mantras i will not be doing the karikas the karikas is very very big it will take a long long time but some gist of it i will explain om purnamada purnamidam purnahat purnamudachade purnasya purnamathay purnameva vasishyade om shanti 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 hi hari om shri gurubhyo namah hari om let's see if there are any questions today does anybody have any questions you can ask a questions at this point of time if you have anything i will ask shanmugam to uh, unmute everybody 
and uh, you may ask now uh, yes yeah, shama you have something Namaste, namaste. Thank you so much. It's the, I think so far the most brilliant and I'm just so happy that we have done it. So, and the reason, my reason is because it's intellectually very, very satisfying, very satisfying. Um, it just completely puts to rest and it's almost like uh, I, I haven't done all the Shastras reading, but more or less, it seems as if he has, he has given you the essence of all our Vedas and all our scriptures and Bhagavad Gita and all of that. That's what it feels like. I'm not sure that you have to answer me that, whether you think this is the essence. Yes, absolutely. Shama, this, uh, what you're saying is the truth because... Mm. Uh, uh, these 10 verses are really uh, mind-boggling verses. They convey yeah. the truth and it is the same truth we are all uh, trying to learn. And uh, it's, it's and you know, you, you were, you were uh, responsible for me to take this class <laughs> on Dakshinamurti Sotram because you. you suggested that you wanted to learn Dakshinamurti. Because we it, refer to the Dakshinamurti in all our Gita lectures. That is why, that is why. Lectures. Everywhere we put into context certain certain mantras. We take the first mantra, we talk about that. We use that as a reference point in almost all our learning yeah. of the Upanishads. And it was really my greed and my the idea of you want to be in the fast track, you know, so you want to go fast. Yes. Uh, so I can't have the patience to sit and, you know, read the entire this thing. So they are, and I'm glad because it has more or less done what I am curious. I mean, probably they have not mentioned it. I'm curious to know at what stage of his writing or instruction work did Shankaracharya write this one? Because it looks like he has taken so much pains to understand the human intellect. And accordingly, he of course knew everything. But yeah, for him to uh, take the pains to understand the human mind and think of all possible doubts that can be there, people experience all the different avasthas. So you get all confused. You know, is, it, is that real or is this real? You know, so you're continuously doing that. So he understood all of that. And hence, to me, it looks like he has compose this, you know? Yeah. Uh, to answer this question, Samad, uh, there are some commentators uh, yeah. of this uh, uh, this um, Dakshna Murti Sotram and they say that he has written this Sotram after the Brahma Sutra Bhashyam. After? Okay. okay so that wonderful. He has done the Bhagavad Gita, he has done the Upanishadic uh, commentary, okay. he has done the Brahma Sutra and then he said I don't know whether students will uh, understand after going through the prasthana tram, whether they will still understand the essence. Let me write the Dakshina Murti. Or, or people like me, they would have abandoned and they say, no, it is too much. <laughs> no, or so, people like you who don't want to go through the tree and then they no, come straight yeah. to Dakshina Murti. And, and okay, if you allow me, it's just really some reflections which I've written. Yeah. So, oh, simple. Uh, now I know I am no stranger to myself, or simply to know, just simply me, the grand self, the self, the Atman. There is no difference from the Paramatman. The Paramatman, the me, now, the me, the small me, now dissolved into this eternal bliss, the Satchit Atman am I. That I am none, that I am this, and that he is another, is none other. So he and me, we are all the same. But, and the chara and achara, oh, one and all, there is none another, is me alone. So it's a total aikim. Indeed, I am no stranger no more. There is no this and that. To this great teacher, Shankaracharya, is my salutations. Very nice. Gent gently, carefully, Gently, carefully, the great teacher, does he untie my knots within my mind? Imprisoned I was, having seen the light of knowledge. I shall freely roam this land. 
the samsara of sukha dukha satchit anand is all the jiva jagat ishvara is simply one split it no more the unity of one and all must there be Uh, this you know this splitting i think and this we naturally do we keep dividing i think that is a big problem so if we go with this unifying concept it's a peace abounds joy abounds and that i and see myself know myself doubt assail me no more stranger am i no more finished <laughs> i know much. yeah because so i all this while conveyed, yeah yeah since i was a child my problem has been i don't know this world i don't know myself what yeah. is all this business it bothered me so long and finally i think dakshina murti has i at least intellectually i understand it in a atman meditative self i have to obviously meditate more and more and more but intellectually yeah. i am not confused at all very good thank you so yeah, i have to thank nice. you i have to thank you very thank nice. you shama thank very you nice. uh uh sandeep has uh, said that there are some articles which say that uh shankaraja studied sutra samhita 18 times before he has written this text yeah it's possible what did he, he study sorry uh, what did he study he said sutra samhita there is some text which called as sutra samhita Okay. So yeah, you can you can Google and find out what this text is. But no, I'm, I'm happy. Sure. Let Shankara Charya do. I don't need to. Extra but this is enough for me. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Uh, anybody else has anything else to share at this stage? Mr. Mr. Kamal, yeah, the, I, I just yeah. would like. Yeah, yeah, yeah go, go ahead. ahead. Yeah. Mr. Kamal, the summing was <laughs> the summing up was very beautiful. this uh, course has helped me a lot very nice okay okay and then this uh, you often mentioned the text called vichar sagara who is the author of that text uh, it's called as nishchala dasa nishchala dasa okay vichar sagara is written by nishchala dasa he was a, uh, he was a uh, acharya he was a teacher uh-huh. uh, who existed 150 years ago in north of india Ah. and uh, he has written this book called as vichara sagara it's a very popular book in north india okay. it was originally written in hindi mm. and then it was uh, uh, translated in sanskrit and there are uh, uh, commentaries available from uh, i mean uh, uh, there there are uh, textbooks available uh, of vichara sagara you can google it up in the uh, website uh it's a it's a it's a logical text uh, it uh, there is a swamiji in india who has been teaching this text and he is still not finished it is taking it for the last 10 years he has been teaching this text uh swami paramatma nanda from chennai oh hmm. i see uh, he has been teaching this text uh, so I, uh, there are almost like 330 or 40 lectures he has finished uh uh 340 lectures on one text he started teaching this text 10 years ago and he still not completed the text so it's, it's a huge actually yeah. I, i don't have that time <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, the notes are available in my website okay in my website i have written about 2600 or uh, 2600 pages i have listened uh Uh, uh almost 200 and i am right now listening to 272nd lecture uh so i have listened out of 340 i have listened to 272 i'm writing notes on it as i listen i write so you have about 2 uh, 3000 pages in the website and uh, um, you uh, i have taken some uh, summary session on vichara sagara it's available in the uh, youtube but it's a beautiful text it's a very very uh, logical it it pulls insight into after you have done the all the upanishads and if you have studied vedanta for say 25 years and you say that i'm still groping in the dark then uh, that text is very useful and uh, it is divided into three portions one for a person who wants to learn the logic but logic is tarka it's very very confusing 
uh, if you are ready for it, you can go to the sixth chapter directly. If you are a madhyama, you are a middle, then you can go to the fifth chapter. If you feel that you are a uttama, the highest, and I already learned everything, but I want to pick up. Uh, you know, if you feel that you have an ego, that you have learned everything, and I know all the Upanishads very well, I would only say you attempt the fifth chapter, you will miserably fail. You will feel that you have not learned anything in Vedanta. <laughs> I, I thought I will go to the fifth chapter and I will never look at the sixth chapter or the fifth or the, I said, I will go to the fourth chapter, but the Uttama Adhikari of the Vichara Sagara is really top class. You know, you are, we can, we cannot equate ourselves with that Adhikari. Anyway, another, it's a, it's another a point text. was there. Yes. Another point was there. Apart from uh, Sri Sureshwara Acharya's Manasol Rasa, are yes. there any original commentaries on uh, Dakshinamurti Stotra? Uh, there are many commentaries from Chinyananda is there, Dayananda Saraswati is there. Uh, there are many commentaries available. Okay, okay. Yeah. okay. Chinmayananda is quite good. Yeah. Chinmayananda yeah. is there, Dayananda Saraswati is there. If you Google up, you will find all, everybody has talked about Dakshinamurti. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. But the original uh, 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 Sanskrit entry is only Manasolaps. Manasolaps, right. But uh, that requires a lot of Sanskrit uh, knowledge to understand. Thank you. Um, so, so Shekhaji, this is Venkatesh here. <laughs> yes, Venkatesh. Now so, you're sitting in Miami or where are you now? No, no I am in Chicago. <laughs> oh, you're in Chicago. <laughs> So this is the second time what we are doing and all. I just thought uh, <clears throat> this is a, my most uh, favorite uh, one actually, Dachinamuti Sotra. So the first time when we did it, it was really spellbound. And uh, second time, once again, you know, once we just go through the whole scenario, that's the reason it's now 5.30 in the morning here. Yeah, still, I don't, I didn't want to miss it. <laughs> all the way from Singapore to Chicago, still I just wanted to hear actually. Uh, so, but the few so things, did you attend uh, the whole class today? Yeah, yeah, today whole class, yeah. Okay. Right from the beginning, I was just listening. All your analysis are the first two ten verses. <laughs> now, this verse, when I just uh, hear the second time and all, like a uh, lot of things, uh, every time we just hear this sort of uh, Dakshinamuti, Strotram and all, it's a lot of learning process. It's like a real mananam. Yeah. So, what we hear through different texts and all, but this is one which is a very, in the shortest time, what we can get a lot of information, <laughs> whether you take, uh, whether it's Upanishad, or a Brahma Sutra, or the Bhagavad Gita, having done all that, having done this Dakshina Vistrotra was still, I find there's a lot we need to contemplate on this actually. Yes. This is one which talks about uh, three bodies, three avastas, uh, the things behind the indriyas, drit drishya viveka, lot of things are kept inside. Correct. And above all, the relations, what is required between a teacher and a dis uh, disciple. Yes. And all these uh, features, are everything is uh, covered in this. This is one very extraordinary and uh, most important thing what I see here, there is a relation is uh, set up between the awareness and the existence, sat and chit, yeah. and uh, yeah, and which is very very unique actually. We find awareness is only to some of the sentient objects. The objects has got only that existence, but it doesn't have that the sentiency. But right. the relation what is established between that sentiency, between that existence awareness which is very, 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 very exclusive. So wherever I just listen to the Akshinamuthi Sotram, I find uh, that existence, awareness, what has been revealed uh, in these 10 verses, which is really an extraordinary aspect of this uh, particular Sotram, actually. So, yeah, I mean, it's great to know that even Dakshina, I mean, Adi Sankaracharya also had to go through the different, uh, talking to different degrees of uh, disciples of the that's what we see, Sarvaka and uh, that uh, six and seven verses refuting uh, yeah. everything and all. 
so that gives uh, like how the things were felt to express uh, and reveal that real truth actually so yeah this is this is very very exclusive i i really enjoy whenever i just and um, i after actually we did that first time i have been doing this dakshinavadi sotam every day it doesn't take more than 3 to 5 minutes to just go through all the certain uh, shlokas uh, before we do any prayers or meditation anything in the every day actually okay. so yeah one gets a lot of uh, comfort and uh, happiness whenever they chant these uh, ten uh, rakshnamurti sotam that's what, that's my personal experience do you know it by heart yeah. yeah i i know now i remember the whole that is sundar prandushya ma each and every shloka now i can just by heart yeah, if you chant 10 times uh, if you chant one month uh, for 5 minutes every day this 10 shlokas in the morning or evening whenever you get time it takes only 5 minutes to chant this entire it's just 5 minutes yeah along yeah. along with the dhyan shloka or yeah, you, know, you can drop the dhyan shloka you can just do the 10 verses Okay. Yeah, I was it. thinking about it. Yeah, you can just do the ten verses straight away. Forget about the Jan Sloka, and then you just do the ten verses. You just repeat it, uh, say for one month. You will get it back. Yeah, yeah. because and all the, all the other yeah, like Nirvana Ashtakam seem like subsidiary ones, you know. Yes. So you feel right at the top is definitely yes. Dakshinamurti. Dakshinamurti is really really. And then others will the follow. Yeah. yeah. Mm. yeah th- this is very exclusive initially we find as if you know it takes time and all but i had to struggle not more than a week i can assure you all actually only one week you just play the actual audio and then listen and all then you do it you will you will not take more than 5 minutes to cover all uh, by itself actually. very very comfortable and the whole uh, chanting itself is uh, very melodious and it gives a lot of uh, inbuilt knowledge and awareness and all it's very I very... want to really c- confess my gross ignorance about this sutra before uh, shake before I, i just heard about people doing it and i imagine my ignorance i thought dakshinamurti stotra is about a god who is in the south you know like you have different gods yeah that's the that's the that's the general so, tendency so, so and i and i thought my god now i find yeah. it shocking to think as to how ignorant can one be you know i just i just assumed for a long time that i'd heard of it but never bothered yeah, to yeah. nay that's why dakshinamurti has started his first shloka with this sundar par drishya maharaj agri tuljyam nijan antargat is all within us only <laughs> <laughs> yes true very true yeah, wonderful yeah. is a very very beautiful very high end and very extraordinary any number of times we just go through the lot yeah, this, of the, the, the things so, that reveals actually yeah the beautiful yeah, example is the nana chit ghato darasti tamaha mahadeep and, uh, and the five yeah. beams which rise which come out from as a five beams you know like we are in the body there is a light of consciousness that yeah. light is what i'm seeing through my eyes that light is what i'm hearing that light is what is you know this this particular verse is a tremendous uh, uh, really impact yeah. for meditation but yeah, even yeah, the yeah. ninth verse i find it very unifying it's yeah. almost all of whatever has been said before it's just yeah. neatly so the whole yeah, thing yeah. together is wonderful yeah anyway i okay. will stop very good so next week we are going to start the um, Amandukya, this is also Shama. It is your request. <laughs> so, huh? I had already what, done it for the other group. What, what more do I want? <laughs> hey, Amandukya Upanishad also everybody will enjoy. Actually, this is very very fantastic one. Yeah, and great, uh, uh, when when you're doing the mandukya I'll actually be also studying a bit of neuroscience because I want to see where it resonates together you know all what that we have learned of the different states so I, I'm going to study alongside you know just for fun just yeah for yeah fun. you can do that because a lot of people <laughs> I know there are a lot of swami ji who study psychology mm. and yeah. uh, who have found a lot of benefits uh, uh, of studying psychology together with mandukya upanishad 
Because, All right. Okay. Yeah, you see, even this uh, uh, the entire Vedanta, if you study together with psychology, psychology is the study of the mind, and you know, yeah. Well, once you, or you neuroscience, you know, you can see that the 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 problem with neuroscience is that it it, it stops at the level of matter. It yeah. doesn't go to the level of consciousness. Consciousness. Yeah. That is where it stops, and Vedanta starts from consciousness. Exactly. See, this so, is where... so I had actually just already made, you know, so we have this CBT or cognitive behavior therapy, which is supposed to be essentially correcting the error in your thinking. Yeah. So, but what can be better than this spiritual CBT? So I just call it spiritual CBT because this is the uh, whole error in your conscious awareness of your own self. Yes. You know, that's, and through all different. the different states. So yeah. this is the ultimate CBT, you know, yeah. and I feel you can't be wrong with this at all, you know. Yeah, yeah. so it's yeah. wonderful. Okay, thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank okay, you. Vengadesh, enjoy your time in Chicago. <laughs> yeah, uh, thanks. Uh, she she you. Have one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she yeah, 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 Sandeep, tell me. See, I don't want to again, you know, uh, probably say about Dakshinamurti Sotam in the next, uh, you know, class or something like that. So I think, you know, uh, like based on the past impression or something like that, uh, uh, I've got access to this Sotram like uh, three years back. Yeah. Okay. And let me tell you, uh, even now also, I feel like, you know, there is something, you know, which has to be extracted from it, actually. I mean, you, you know, the exact meaning, uh, yeah. Uh, even though I've I've found the discourses on multiple people saying about Dakshinamurti Stotram, but there is something which is, you know, even day even today also when I when I chant it, I get something out of it, uh, you know, which um which was unknown before actually. Correct. Okay. Yeah. So it reveals itself. You see, the Stotram uh, mm. is so powerful; uh, it will remove the ignorance from your intellect. Chanting yes. the Stotram is extremely important because it gives you the punyam. When you chant, what happens is you, you, you earn punyam and the same mantra, if you have chanted three years or two years ago, and today you chant, you will find a new meaning and a new, because it is that it is, this, this uh, consciousness is so powerful. It can, it can, uh, remove so much of all the old ignorance which you have been having. You see, when you say, I, I'm not surprised, Sandeep, you're, what you're saying is the truth. Uh, every time you learn this totram, you will find that some portions of your ignorance is being taken away. You know, exactly. Some portions, mm. small, small things, and you will find suddenly there's an illumination inside you. Oh, this is what is Dakshinamurti Stotram. This is what it is. You know, that, that illumination come, comes inside your own intellect. And one more thing, Shekharji, what I've found is, like, based on, like, you know, the other discourses, like, uh, so th in Vedanta, right, there are totally seven terms uh, which, which are very common. Like, for example, say Atman, Brahman, Ishvara, Jiva, Jagat, okay, uh, Maya, and Guru. When I say Guru, Guru is the one who removes yeah. the ignorance, right? So, this particular Dakshinamurti Stotram, you know, it, it established the relationship between one or the other two technical terms, mm -hmm. right? For, like, like, for example, the fifth verse, right? Fifth verse talks about only Brahman, right? right. Brahman, what, what, what exactly is the reality? Okay. And the fourth verse, you know, the one, the Nana Chidra, uh, yeah. you know, it starts with the Nana Chidra. It talks about the relationship between Jiva, Jagat and Atma, Correct. right? Mm -hmm. So it establishes the relationship. So it's, it's something like how can Jiva obtain the knowledge of Jagat using Atman. Yeah. That's what, that, that's what is, you know, uh, right. the, the example of that lamp, you know, inside that uh, uh, pot actually, right? Yeah. So likewise, you know, it's beautiful. I mean, I can't express it because, you know, words will again fall back to explain the reality. Uh, but it's an absolute, uh, I think I, I, I should really thank uh, Shama, you know, for uh, insisting <laughs> you to take this Dakshamuthi Stotram. And also Venkatesh, you know, I think he has got a lot of insights. Uh, whatever he said is i totally agree with him you know it's a very short text if you i mean if you wanted to uh, you know get entire meaning and entire uh, essence of vedanta 
I think uh, this text would would be suffice. So that's why what I do is even if I chant the uh, Adi Shankaracharya Stotram one or once or twice, but I don't forget this and I I chant it uh, all stotrams before this stotram because this stotram is like kind of uh, makutam actually for all uh, you know when oh, compared to other stotrams. Yeah, yeah. Just the starting. Interesting. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Very good, Sanjay. Yeah, I'm, I'm very yeah. happy to your uh, what you have said. It shows the depth of your uh, keenness to realize the truth. You know, very very nice. I'm so happy to see that you are you have come into this class and you are and, enjoying this. Uh, and Shikhar I would like you to one comment. quick question. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, just a quick question. It's a Viveka question, and I want to know because um, I I want to inquire from all the wonderful people here. Uh, Sometimes, you know, what you are learning like this Vedantic knowledge, it is so tempting to share it with other people. And I want to know, how do you, do you discriminate with whom shall you speak or whom shall you not? But sometimes it's very difficult for me to uh, resist uh, tempting. And then afterwards I feel, why was I talking to so-and-so? So it's just a question I want to ask what others think about it. These Absolutely. spiritual knowledge, do you feel comfortable talking to people who are not particularly keen, but they are nice, good people, they are intelligent people, they are thinking people as well. So would you discuss or not discuss? I mean, generally, I mean, when it comes to me, right, because like, uh, I would like to take it, you know, sometimes uh, I keep on saying this to my close friends that this totram is very important and, and you know, uh, mm. you know, it is very important and you know it is the best one you know that you could uh, probably you know start in uh, start manana or shavana on it but mm. sometimes people listen and sometimes people don't listen but I don't get uh, any upset actually if people don't listen because it is up to their uh, purva janma impressions right it is up to the past life impressions that you know th they should get access to this you know such kind of beautiful stotra but do you think it's wise do you think it's wise because i feel really each and every individual has not only a physical dna unique pattern but the mind is even more unique i think in so many ways and therefore each person who's a seeker, for example, we all have landed up with Shekharji. How come? Just because there must be something within us that it is just pushing us, pushing us. And so you come to mind. But so I would you not feel that probably those people who are clearly charvakas, let me say, just Correct. for... Uh, for reasons, because they are good, but their search is something else. It's probably not very wise. I was just kind of debating this issue in my mind, and it came to me that this is the best place I can ask. So, Sandeep, you feel happy about uh, talking it with your friends? Yeah, I, I feel happy talking to the friends, but even to the strangers as well, because friends, you know, I think, you know, they might <laughs> you're more or daring and bold than I am. <laughs> yeah, I love that. But what, you know, I, I I generally see the person. Okay, I, if even if, like even if based on my mutual friend, I generally ask, "Hi, how are you into spirituality?" Then they say, "If you if they are into spirituality, I'll first talk about this. I'll first start Dakshinamurti Stotram as my introductory text. I don't introduce myself. I don't uh, tell my background. This is the best stotra. You have to learn it. I I don't know. Somehow, you know, I'm mad about it. Even if people block me, I I don't. I don't but I mean, it's, 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 it's the beautiful things. I mean, people has to learn this because this is the only life where they can, you know, invest, uh, you know, they, where they can use the intellect, right? Uh, yeah. and, and what is the difference between the uh, humans and the other uh, living organisms, like, you know, uh, animals or something? It's the yeah. power of the intellect, right? Which, which is more important and they have to invest, exactly. uh, you know, they have to start utilizing their intellect to understand that, such beautiful stotram written by Adi Shankaracharya and not every time, not everyone gets an opportunity. So that's why I keep stressing it, but it, it is up to them because I can't ask them to do like this and that. It's our responsibility to share the information. So, and one more thing, Shekharji. Uh, so I was going through multiple uh, sites actually, you know, to uh, to get to know about this uh, Dakshinamuthi stotram. And fortunately, I found your site. And let me tell you, it's not to praise you. Uh, Vedanta students it will definitely remain as one of the you know top sites for the you know to for the for sadhakas to look into you know uh, Vedanta information because I think you know lot of text you know and I, I don't know how you are managing 
that's what the question i wanted to ask actually because mm-hmm. Almost no, I, I you know? can I can explain to you, Sandeep. The secret. You know, the, secret. you know his secret. You know his secret. I had to I had to tell you that uh, this uh, Shekaji. I mean, I I am attending to these classes maybe for the last uh, eight, uh, seven to eight years or something like that. And uh, Shekaji, Shekaji must be doing uh, at least two decades before actually all this. <laughs> so. by the time we started he already gone through so many books and so many scenarios and all in fact when i just started actually i was not even able to though i have some knowledge about sanskrit and all but still mm-hmm. i used to find uh, chanting you know bhagavad gita and all very difficult but that time it was like a flow for uh, shekha ji actually if you just no. see the way he uh, you might have seen dakshinamurti stotram and all and you might not have heard him uh, chanting this bhagavad gita and all actually shekaji is some inbuilt is there so i <laughs> have to say that uh, uh, we are all very fortunate uh, to come across uh, this such a beautiful uh, knowledge and all but behind this he had put a extraordinary effort actually extraordinary yeah. i mean which i cannot this i will be see i am also working and all that so whenever he asks me to do some help and all i find it so difficult actually but uh, i do not know how in spite of uh, like as uh, he is also working full time and all that uh, could able to spare so much time and all so he has gone beyond a limit to get this uh, information and pass it on to us and all is a greatest service i i, I could say i mean it would not have been so easy for people like me to go through so many upanishads i was so much enthusiastic initially like uh, shama and all what you are going through at this mm-hmm. stage actually this is how we used to be so desperate then we used to just tell shekha ji shekha ji now we do mandukya then we do brahmanika and he used to go through all the books <laughs> and then and all he used to give us beautiful uh, you know so it's a great experience actually so sometimes when i just uh, flashback all that scenario and all uh, so i can simply say you are fortunate that's all yeah, it, it happened how it happened yeah. that's yeah. Uh, that, that has happened yeah i wanted so to vedanta just share student, yeah vedanta student is like a greatest uh, secret actually like yeah. see i i have been shifting to see this zoom also it started uh, because when when i shift to brunei then i said does ekaj i don't want to miss your class actually then mm-hmm. someone has suggested uh, that zoom will be this thing then he implemented everything you know the implementation is happening so fast actually so mm. that no, i would have been very privilege yeah we never we i i never knew initially it has started for few people like me to far hearing and all that and today it, it has become a mandatory requirement so th- that's really great actually and all these upanishads they started like people like you me and all have been just uh, <laughs> talking to shekha ji just do it and he has been doing it it's not really like when we have gone through this uh, brahma sutras and all uh, it was so difficult to understand actually initially but uh, he made it very comfortable to understand uh, those things actually so i also uh, i also landed yeah. on uh, through the vedanta website you know vedanta students website and i thought how can somebody write notes like this you know when exactly. i used to write medical notes like this you know very right. classified um, and i thought my god this cannot be right you know so it was great you know wonderful i just wanted to share this shekha ji please um, that is any one of our group if somebody is interested in uh, uh, learning sanskrit from the very basic to whatever the best site is like your site best site is uh, vioma lab sanskrit patshala they are a big company from bangalore beautiful youtube videos beautiful right now i'm doing their high school sanskrit grammar made easy so good i i tell you i just really overjoyed so now at least you know it's a full charm of the sanskrit shlokas where you can actually begin to you know just see it in your head the meaning yeah, shama but uh, just yeah, send me you know the uh, send me the link of that I, I will, whatsapp you, you have I'll, a look uh, yeah you I'll will really enjoy it also i'll put that in the vedanta website also 
I'll that would be very nice. I, I've been thinking about it. Yeah. yeah, wonderful. And one, yeah. yeah, one more good thing is, uh, Shama, I agree with you because yeah. writing notes, I think we never find it because, you know, a lot of people have discourses, you know, like Paris and Paris. Yeah, right? absolutely. But if, yeah, yeah. but if someone wants to review, review, you know, the text which they have known before, because, yeah. uh, so they can come to Vedanta students and they can probably, you know, try to see, you know, uh, you know, the yeah. gist of it, that all the important points have been put yeah. in a wonderful way. And also one more important thing is Shekharji doesn't think about only Vedanta students, but glad that he put other links also, you know, yeah. other useful links uh, exactly. in the Vedanta students, you know, so that uh, other, I other people can... I explored much of that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, but yeah, so that's what uh, I think. But, uh, thanks, Shekharji, for your uh, things. But uh, that's what I just wonder. The uh, example, Sandeep, is like today's summary notes. Exactly. It's just so wonderful. Can we do it on our own? No. No, absolutely. Even not. if I have uh, thoroughly, attentively listened to each one of them, you ask me at the end of it, me, Shama, can you make the summary? I say, come on, you know, <laughs> you must be joking. <laughs> yeah, so, I, I think for that, you know, I think there should be a lot of information and there should be a lot of presenting, you know, the presenting yeah. presentation skills also plays a very important role, actually. Exactly. Yeah. So Wonderful. the reason why I was being, yeah, the reason why I was bringing is because I can't, uh, like, I felt like this is the first time, you know, I'm hearing from Shekharji, uh, somehow through Vedanta students. And when I found Dakshinamuthi Stotram, okay, I have to make it. Doesn't matter whether it's morning or evening. Uh, but uh, yeah, so uh, one more thing, Shekharji. Uh, so uh, I have texted in the comment section as well. See, uh, Adi Shankaracharya has written this uh, uh, Brahma Sutra Bhashya and Dakshinamuthi Stotram by reading uh, 18 times uh, Sutta Samhita. So did, is that correct, actually? I just wanted to know. It could be. It could be right. You see, these are all yeah. hearsay. Uh, mm -hmm. The entire uh, uh, biography, or there are uh, almost like 100 versions of uh, Shankaracharya's biography. So nobody knows correct. because it's 2,500 years ago. What okay. he did, how he did it, you know, this is... It's a, I, I would doubt that. I would yeah. really, really doubt. I mean, Shankaracharya is intellect and genius. Yes. You don't need to read anything more than once. Yeah. He would just read it once yeah, and I probably do. teach it to that person again, whoever yeah. has taught he him. You know? need to read he will say, okay, text, let me yeah. tell you back. You yeah. know? Something of the kind Vivekanand could do, you know, yeah. he, he has that kind of... A, See, the yes. Shankaracharya, he knows the consciousness, knowing which everything is known actually. For him, he doesn't need to know anything. <laughs> he, he is known <laughs> by himself. <laughs> yeah. He knows yeah. everything. Next week, yes. I will do, do about uh, five to ten minutes, uh, just give you an introduction to the website, because many people don't know what the I website think is. So. That yeah, so, I think that's uh, really better, Next yeah. week, <laughs> after the class, uh, I will stop the class a little bit early, and then ten, for ten minutes, I will take to explain the website. I've just learned from Sandeep and Vankatesh, you know, yeah. a little bit more about the website. Okay. Yeah. Next week, yeah. I'll just give you a backdrop of what the website is. If you, yeah, if you would just kind of better. quickly show a bit yeah, of... Yeah, I'll, we'll, we'll I'll see how I can present it. We'll see okay, it then. Week. Excellent. So Shekhar, Thank one, you. One more thing, yeah. Shekharji. I mean, yeah. like, this is like, you know... Uh, like, so I don't know how, you, how are you managing funds for uh, uh, Vedanta <laughs> yes. students. Uh, I so would... you know, I, I don't have any hesitation because, like, let me know if you if you if you want us to you know support financially. No, uh, no, no, not at all, Sandeep. There are many people who have asked me the same question. I don't need any financial <laughs> uh, for Vedanta students. Uh, it's it's a it's a free site, and uh, I, uh, fortunately, I don't need the funds today. Uh, it's it's uh, it, so these are all absolutely free. There's nothing. I mean, uh, at this stage, no. If there is anything but... requirement in future, I'll let you know. But you haven't no. got it copyrighted, have you? What because copyright? I, I will, no, you know, I said anybody can copy anything from my website. There's no problem because this is I, free information. No, but it's really unfair. Suppose what you are written notes and I go and present yeah, uh, somewhere. Yeah, you can present Shama. I, I don't mind at all because it's... No, it's, that's it's, very, <coughs> very, very, very hey, not yeah. Sotram you want to propagate. That's all. Whoever wants no, to no, learn no. Dakshina Murti Sotram. Uh, I, I think you know, that's not fair. It's okay. Okay, uh, thank anyway, you very much, everybody. Thank you. So, yeah. Uh, see you next Shubh week. Shubhratri. Shubhratri. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Shikarji. And thank, thank you. you Shama thank you, all Bhattu. of you. Thank you, yeah, Sandeep. Thanks, Bhattu. then. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Hariyo. Next time, Sandeep, we should see you. Okay, I've been here. Thank yeah, you, Sandeep. Sure. Hariyo. <laughs> Hariyo. Yeah, thank sure. you. Thank you.